Welcome back. Today, we're diving deep into the timeless wisdom of Dale Carnegie's classic, How to Win Friends and Influence People. This groundbreaking book is segmented into four transformative parts. One, fundamental techniques in handling people. Two, six ways to make people like you. Three, how to win people to your way of thinking. And four, be a leader. How to change people without giving offense or arousing resentment. In this video, we'll distill each chapter's essence, exploring the foundational principle behind it, its origin, and how you can seamlessly weave it into the fabric of your daily interactions. Ready to enhance your interpersonal skills and navigate the social maze with finesse? Let's get started. Part 1. Fundamental Techniques in Handling People Chapter 1. If you want to gather honey, don't kick over the beehive. In our daily interactions, it's easy to fall into the trap of pointing out mistakes, condemning actions, or complaining about circumstances. However, in the first chapter, there's a compelling argument against these behaviors, emphasizing the power of understanding and empathy. Picture this. Tom, a manager at a tech firm, notices that one of his team members, Sarah, has been consistently late in submitting her reports. Instead of immediately criticizing her, Tom decides to approach the situation differently. He invites Sarah for a coffee and gently inquires if there's anything bothering her. Sarah opens up about her struggles with balancing work and caring for her sick mother. Tom's empathetic approach not only offers Sarah a safe space to share her challenges, but also strengthens their professional relationship. Had Tom immediately criticized Sarah, he would have missed the underlying issue and potentially damaged their rapport. Imagine you've organized a dinner at your place and one of your friends arrives significantly late without prior notice. Instead of greeting them with a complaint or a sarcastic remark, take a moment to genuinely ask if everything is okay. You might discover they had an unexpected work emergency or a personal challenge they were navigating. By choosing to respond with concern rather than criticism, you create an atmosphere of trust and understanding, reinforcing the bond of your friendship. The essence of this chapter is not just about avoiding criticism, but about fostering understanding and empathy in our interactions. By choosing to approach situations with a compassionate mindset, we can build stronger relationships and create a more harmonious environment. Principle number one is, avoid criticism, condemnation, or complaint. Embrace understanding and empathy to foster positive interactions. Chapter two, the big secret of dealing with people. Every individual, regardless of age, background, or status, shares a universal desire to be genuinely appreciated. In this chapter, the emphasis is on the profound impact of honest and sincere appreciation in our interactions. Meet Alex, a diligent employee who's been with his company for five years. Despite his consistent performance, he often feels overlooked and undervalued. One day, his supervisor, Lisa, takes note of a particularly challenging project Alex completed and sends a company-wide email acknowledging his hard work and dedication. This simple act of genuine appreciation not only boosts Alex's morale, but also motivates him to continue delivering his best. Lisa's recognition made Alex feel seen and valued, something he had been missing for years. Think about the last time you enjoyed a meal at a local restaurant. Instead of just paying the bill and leaving, take a moment to personally thank the chef or leave a positive review online, highlighting what you loved about the dish. Such gestures, though small, can make a significant difference in someone's day, letting them know their efforts are truly appreciated. While it's easy to get caught up in our fast-paced lives, taking the time to genuinely appreciate those around us can create lasting positive impacts. It's not just about making others feel good. It's about recognizing the value they bring to our lives. Principle number two is give honest and sincere appreciation understand the profound impact of recognizing and valuing the efforts of others. Chapter three, he who can do this has the whole world with him. He who cannot walks a lonely way. In the realm of human interactions, understanding what others desire and helping them achieve it is a powerful tool. This chapter delves deep into the art of arousing an eager want in others, highlighting its significance in building strong lasting relationships. Consider James, a salesperson trying to pitch a new software solution to a potential client, Maria. Instead of bombarding her with technical jargon and features, 
James first asks Maria about the challenges her company faces. Learning about her needs, he tailors his pitch to address those specific issues, showing Maria how his software can solve her problems. By focusing on what Maria eagerly wants, James not only makes a successful sale, but also establishes a foundation of trust and understanding. Suppose you're planning a weekend getaway with friends. Instead of deciding everything on your own, engage them in the planning process. Ask them about their preferences, the activities they're eager to try, or the places they want to visit. By considering their eager wants, you ensure that the trip is enjoyable for everyone and strengthens the bond of your group. The ability to tap into the desires and needs of others isn't just a skill, it's an art. By focusing on what others eagerly want, we can navigate our interactions more effectively, fostering mutual understanding and collaboration. Principle number three is, arouse an eager want. Understand and cater to the genuine desires and needs of others to build strong connections. Part two, six ways to make people like you. Chapter one, do this and you'll be welcome anywhere. One of the most profound ways to create a lasting impression and build meaningful relationships is by showing genuine interest in others. In this chapter, the spotlight is on the transformative power of genuine interest and how it can open doors to countless opportunities and connections. Let's take the story of Emma, a journalist assigned to cover a local community event. While other reporters quickly gather their stories and leave, Emma takes her time, engaging with the attendees, asking about their experiences, and listening intently to their stories. By the end of the day, not only does she have a richer, more detailed article, but she's also made connections with several community members who now see her as a trusted ally and friend. Her genuine interest in their lives made all the difference. The next time you're at a social gathering or a meeting, instead of sticking to small talk, try to delve a bit deeper. Ask open-ended questions, listen actively, and show genuine curiosity about the lives and experiences of those you're conversing with. You'll be surprised at how much more meaningful and memorable your interactions become. In a world where superficial interactions are common, taking the time to genuinely invest in understanding others can set you apart. It's not just about being liked, it's about creating deep, lasting connections based on mutual respect and understanding. Principle number four is, become genuinely interested in other people. Unlock the power of authentic connections by valuing the stories and experiences of others. Chapter two. A simple way to make a good first impression. In the vast array of human interactions, few gestures are as universally understood and appreciated as a genuine smile. This chapter underscores the undeniable influence of a warm, sincere smile in setting a positive tone for any interaction. Imagine Mia, a teacher starting her first day at a new school. The hallways are bustling with students she doesn't know, and the weight of being in an unfamiliar environment is palpable. Instead of retreating into her classroom, Mia chooses to stand by the door, greeting each student with a genuine smile as they walk in. This simple act becomes a conversation starter for many students who approach her, curious to know more about their new teacher. By lunchtime, word has spread about the friendly new teacher, and Mia finds herself surrounded by students eager to chat. Her smile, genuine and inviting, not only eased her own nerves, but also made countless students feel seen and welcomed on that first day. Think about your daily routine. Whether you're grabbing your morning coffee, commuting to work, or meeting someone new, make a conscious effort to greet people with a smile. It's a small gesture, but its impact can be profound. A smile can brighten someone's day, diffuse tension, and create an atmosphere of warmth and openness. While words and actions play a crucial role in our interactions, Never underestimate the silent power of a genuine smile. It's a universal language that communicates kindness, openness, and positivity. Principle number five is smile genuinely. Harness the silent yet profound influence of a warm smile to create positive first impressions and meaningful connections. Chapter three, if you don't do this, you are headed for trouble. Names hold power. They are an integral part of our identity and signify recognition and respect. This chapter emphasizes the significance of remembering and using names in our interactions, highlighting its role in building trust and rapport. Meet Leo, a local bookstore owner in a bustling city. 
His shop, though small, sees a myriad of customers daily, from tourists to regulars. One day, a young woman named Isabel walks in, searching for a rare edition. Leo doesn't have it in stock, but promises to find it for her. A month later, Isabel returns, not expecting Leo to remember her. To her surprise, not only does he greet her by name, but he also has the book she was looking for. This personal touch, the act of remembering her name and her request, transforms Isabel from a one-time customer to a loyal patron. Word spreads about the thoughtful bookstore owner, and soon, many come not just for the books, but for the warm, personalized experience Leo offers. The next time you meet someone, make a conscious effort to remember their name. If you're worried about forgetting, try repeating it during your conversation or associating it with a memorable trait or feature. When you meet them again and address them by their name, you'll notice an immediate warmth and appreciation in their response. In the vast landscape of human interactions, the act of remembering and using someone's name stands out as a gesture of respect and acknowledgement. It's a simple yet powerful way to show that you value and recognize the individuality of others. Principle number six is, remember names. Recognize the power of personal acknowledgement and the trust it fosters in relationships. Chapter four, an easy way to become a good conversationalist. In a world dominated by constant chatter and the urge to be heard, the art of listening stands out as a rare and valuable skill. This chapter underscores the transformative power of truly listening to others emphasizing its role in fostering deeper connections and understanding. Consider Jake, a middle-aged man attending a neighborhood barbecue. While most are engrossed in their own stories, Jake takes a seat next to a quiet, elderly woman named Mrs. Thompson. Instead of dominating the conversation with his own tales, he simply asks her about her life. As she begins to share stories from her youth, Jake listens intently, asking questions and showing genuine interest. By the end of the evening, a small crowd has gathered around them, captivated by Mrs. Thompson's tales. Later, many neighbors commend Jake, not for being a great storyteller, but for being a great listener. They had lived next to Mrs. Thompson for years, but never truly knew her. Jake's act of listening not only made Mrs. Thompson feel valued, but also enriched the community with shared history and connection. The next time you're in a conversation, whether it's with a friend recounting their day, or a colleague discussing a project. Resist the urge to interject or formulate your response while they're speaking. Instead, focus entirely on what they're saying. Respond with empathy and understanding, asking open-ended questions that show you're engaged. You'll find that not only does the quality of your conversations improve, but the depth of your relationships does as well. Being a good conversationalist isn't about speaking eloquently or dominating a discussion. It's about the ability to listen actively, offering others the space to express themselves fully and feel genuinely heard. Principle number seven is be a good listener. Understand the profound impact of active listening and fostering genuine connections and deeper understanding. Chapter five, how to interest people. One of the most effective ways to engage and captivate someone is by discussing topics they're passionate about. This chapter delves into the art of conversing in terms of another person's interests, highlighting its role in building rapport and fostering genuine connections. Meet Lara, a corporate event planner tasked with organizing a company retreat. Instead of choosing generic team building activities, she decides to take a different approach. Lara schedules one-on-one -on -one meetings with employees from various departments, asking them about their hobbies and passions outside of work. She learns that many are avid hikers, some are into photography, while others love culinary experiences. Using this information, Lara plans a retreat that includes a scenic hiking trail, a photography workshop, and a local cooking class. The retreat is a massive success, with employees raving about how personalized and engaging the activities were. Lara's approach of tailoring the event to the employees' interests not only made the retreat memorable, but also showcased her genuine interest in understanding and valuing her colleagues. When meeting someone new or trying to strengthen an existing relationship, take the time to ask about their hobbies, passions, or recent experiences they're excited about. Then, engage in conversations around those topics. This simple act of showing interest in what excites them can lead to more meaningful and enriching interactions. To truly interest people, it's essential to step out of our own perspectives and dive into the world of others. 
By discussing topics they're passionate about, we not only engage them, but also build bridges of understanding and connection. Principle number eight is, talk in terms of other people's interests. Engage and connect by focusing on what excites and matters to them. Chapter six, how to make people like you instantly. In the intricate dance of human interactions, one principle stands out as universally effective, making others feel valued and important. This chapter delves into this timeless truth, emphasizing its pivotal role in forming instant connections and fostering mutual respect. Think of Rosa, a hotel receptionist in a bustling tourist city. While her job involves checking guests in and out, she has a unique approach that sets her apart. Whenever guests arrive, Rosa takes a moment to genuinely compliment something about them, be it their choice of attire, their travel accessories, or even their smile. She then inquires about the purpose of their visit and offers personalized recommendations based on their interests. Guests often leave the reception with a smile, feeling recognized and important. Over time, the hotel receives numerous reviews, specifically mentioning Rosa's warm and personalized approach, with many guests returning just for the welcoming experience she offers. The next time you're interacting with someone, whether it's a colleague, a family member, or even a stranger, Find a genuine way to make them feel important. It could be a sincere compliment, acknowledgement of their efforts, or simply giving them your undivided attention. These small gestures can have a profound impact, making others feel valued and appreciated. In a world where everyone is vying for attention and validation, the act of making someone feel important can be a game changer. It's a simple yet powerful way to create instant rapport and leave a lasting positive impression. Principle number nine is, make others feel important. Recognize and value the uniqueness of each individual to foster immediate connections and mutual respect. Part three, how to win people to your way of thinking. Chapter one, you can't win an argument. Engaging in arguments might seem like a way to assert one's point of view, but more often than not, it leads to further division and rarely results in genuine understanding. The opening chapter of the third part delves into the inherent challenges of confrontational discourse and the value of seeking common ground. Picture two neighbors, Clara and Raj. They share a fence that's seen better days and needs replacement. Clara believes a wooden fence would be best, citing its aesthetic appeal, while Raj is adamant about a metal one due to its durability. Their discussions quickly escalate into heated arguments, with neither willing to budge. One day, a mutual friend Diego visits and notices the tension. Instead of taking sides, he proposes a solution. Why not build a fence that uses both materials, combining the beauty of wood with the strength of metal? To visualize his idea, Diego sketches a design that impressively merges both elements. Seeing the potential, Clara and Raj realize they were so focused on winning the argument that they missed out on a creative solution that could satisfy both their preferences. With Diego's mediation, what started as a disagreement transformed into a collaborative project that both neighbors took pride in. Imagine you're at a family dinner where the topic of vacation destinations arises. Your sister is keen on a beach getaway, citing the need for relaxation, while you're pushing for a mountain trip, eager for adventure and hiking. Instead of letting the conversation spiral into a debate, take a moment to reflect on her perspective. Propose a location that offers both, a coastal area with nearby mountains or hills. This way, mornings can be spent on the beach and afternoons can be dedicated to hiking. By understanding and accommodating both desires, you turn a potential argument into a win-win situation, ensuring a memorable vacation for the entire family. While the instinct to defend our beliefs and viewpoints is natural, it's essential to recognize that arguments rarely lead to productive outcomes. Seeking understanding and common ground is a more effective and harmonious approach. Principle number 10 is, avoid arguments. Understand the value of seeking mutual understanding over confrontational discourse. Chapter two, a sure way of making enemies and how to avoid it. In our diverse world, differing opinions are inevitable. However, the manner in which we respond to these differences can either foster understanding or create divisions. This chapter emphasizes the crucial nature of respecting others' opinions even if we don't necessarily agree with them. Meet Sam, a passionate environmentalist, and his friend Alex, a businessman in the manufacturing sector. Over dinner, 
a discussion about environmental policies arises. Sam, feeling strongly about the topic, initially dismisses Alex's views on the economic implications of certain regulations. Sensing the rising tension, another friend, Lila, intervenes. She encourages Sam to genuinely listen to Alex's perspective without immediate judgment. As the conversation unfolds, Sam realizes that while they may have different viewpoints, understanding the complexities of Alex's position allows for a more nuanced discussion. By the end of the evening, both have a deeper appreciation for each other's opinions, and their friendship remains intact. The next time you encounter a differing opinion, whether in a social setting, at work, or even online, resist the urge to immediately counter or dismiss it. Instead, take a moment to genuinely understand the other person's perspective, ask questions, show curiosity, and even if you still disagree, ensure that your response is respectful. This approach not only prevents potential conflicts, but also enriches your own understanding of diverse viewpoints. In a world filled with varied perspectives, the act of showing respect for others' opinions is a bridge to understanding and harmony. It's not about agreement, but about mutual respect and appreciation. Principle number 11 is, show respect for others' opinions. Foster understanding and prevent conflicts by valuing diverse perspectives. Chapter three, if you're wrong, admit it. In the journey of life, mistakes are inevitable. However, the way we handle these missteps can define our character and the quality of our relationships. This chapter underscores the power and integrity of acknowledging our errors and the respect it garners from others. Think of Lydia, a project manager at a tech company. During a crucial phase of a project, she makes an oversight that results in a significant delay. Instead of deflecting blame or making excuses, Lydia calls for a team meeting. She openly acknowledges her mistake, outlines the consequences, and presents a plan to rectify the situation. Her team, instead of being frustrated, appreciates her transparency and leadership. They rally together to address the setback, and the project ultimately succeeds. Lydia's act of admitting her error not only salvaged the project, but also strengthened the trust and respect her team had for her. The next time you find yourself in a situation where you've made an error, whether it's missing a friend's important event or making a mistake in a work task, take the initiative to admit it. Apologize sincerely, and if possible, offer a solution or a way to make amends. This act of accountability can transform potential conflicts into opportunities for growth and understanding. Owning up to our mistakes isn't a sign of weakness. It's a testament to our integrity and authenticity. In a world where accountability is often lacking, taking responsibility sets a powerful example and fosters trust. Principle number 12 is acknowledge your mistakes. Understand the strength and respect that comes from taking responsibility for one's actions. Chapter four, a drop of honey. The age old adage, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar, rings true in human interactions as well. This chapter emphasizes the power of initiating conversations and interactions in a friendly, positive manner, highlighting its role in setting the tone for productive and harmonious exchanges. Consider the story of Tara, a community leader trying to rally her neighborhood to support a local park renovation. Initially, she approaches the project with a sense of urgency and frustration, pointing out the park's deteriorated state and criticizing the local council's inaction. Her approach is met with resistance and defensiveness. Realizing her strategy isn't working, Tara decides to change her approach. She organizes a community picnic at the park, inviting families to enjoy a day out and reminisce about their favorite memories associated with the park. This positive, friendly gathering creates a sense of nostalgia and community spirit. When Tara later presents her renovation proposal, it's met with enthusiasm and support. By beginning with a drop of honey, she was able to rally her community effectively. The next time you need to address a concern or broach a potentially sensitive topic, consider your approach. Starting the conversation with a positive remark, a shared memory, or even a compliment can pave the way for a more receptive and open dialogue. The way we initiate interactions can significantly influence their outcome. By choosing a friendly, positive start, we create an environment conducive to understanding, collaboration, and mutual respect. Principle number 13 is, begin in a friendly way. Set the stage for constructive and harmonious exchanges by initiating interactions with positivity and warmth. Chapter five, the secret of Socrates. 
The art of persuasion is as old as human communication itself. However, some methods prove more effective than others. Drawing inspiration from the ancient philosopher, this chapter emphasizes the power of using questions to guide others to a conclusion rather than directly opposing their viewpoint. Imagine Carlos, a city planner, proposing a new urban green space in a densely populated area. While many residents are excited, a local business owner, Mr. Patel, is concerned about the loss of parking spaces. Instead of directly countering Mr. Patel's concerns, Carlos adopts a different approach. He asks, Mr. Patel, would you agree that a more attractive neighborhood could increase foot traffic to businesses? Mr. Patel nods. Carlos continues, and if we were to incorporate benches, Wi-Fi, and a small cafe area, do you think it might encourage visitors to stay longer and explore the nearby shops? As the questions unfold, Mr. Patel begins to see the potential benefits of the green space, not just as a park, but as a hub for community and commerce. By the end of the meeting, his reservations have transformed into enthusiastic support, all thanks to Carlos's strategic use of questions. The next time you find yourself in a disagreement, rather than directly countering the other person's viewpoint, try asking open-ended questions that lead them to reconsider certain aspects of their stance. This method not only reduces defensiveness, but also promotes a deeper understanding of the topic at hand. Persuasion doesn't have to be confrontational. By adopting the Socratic method of inquiry, we can guide others to see different perspectives, fostering mutual respect and deeper understanding. Principle number 14 is, use questions to persuade. Embrace the power of inquiry to guide others towards a conclusion, reducing confrontation and promoting collaboration. Chapter six, the safety valve in handling complaints. In the realm of conflict resolution, one of the most effective tools is often the simplest, active listening. This chapter delves into the importance of allowing others to voice their concerns and frustrations, highlighting how this act of listening can serve as a release valve, preventing minor issues from escalating into major conflicts. Consider the story of Aisha, a manager at a bustling restaurant. One evening, a visibly upset customer, Mr. Thompson, approaches her, complaining about the long wait time and a mix-up with his order. Instead of immediately offering a solution or defending her staff, Aisha invites Mr. Thompson to sit and share his experience in detail. As he talks, she listens intently, occasionally nodding or asking clarifying questions. By the time Mr. Thompson finishes, much of his initial frustration has dissipated. Aisha then offers a sincere apology and a solution to make amends. Mr. Thompson, feeling heard and valued, not only accepts her offer but also leaves with a positive impression, turning a potential negative review into a commendation for excellent customer service. When faced with complaints or criticisms, whether from friends, family, or colleagues, resist the immediate urge to jump in with solutions or defenses. Instead, allow the other person to fully express their feelings and concerns. Often the simple act of being heard can alleviate much of the initial frustration, paving the way for constructive dialogue and resolution. In the face of complaints and grievances, active listening emerges as a powerful tool. By providing a space for others to express themselves, we can transform potential conflicts into opportunities for understanding and growth. Principle number 15 is, let others speak. Recognize the de-escalating power of active listening in the face of complaints and disagreements. Chapter 7. How to Get Cooperation Achieving cooperation, especially in situations where interests might diverge, is often a challenge. However, the key often lies in aligning individual benefits with collective goals. This chapter sheds light on the art of showcasing mutual benefits, illustrating how this approach can lead to collaborative efforts and shared successes. Picture Isabel, the head of a community library. She's keen on introducing a digital lending system allowing members to borrow ebooks and audiobooks. However, many of the library's older members, accustomed to traditional books, are hesitant about this new shift. Recognizing their concerns, Isabel organizes a digital day at the library. She sets up stations where members can try out e-readers, listen to audiobook samples, and even attend a short tutorial on using the digital system. More importantly, she emphasizes the benefits the ability to adjust font sizes for easier reading, the convenience of carrying multiple books in one device, and the joy of listening to a story narrated. 
As the day progresses, many of the initially resistant members become intrigued, with some even signing up for digital borrowing on the spot. Isabel's approach of hands-on experience and highlighting benefits transforms reluctance into enthusiasm, ushering the library into the digital age while keeping its community intact. When proposing a new idea or seeking cooperation, think about the individual benefits for those involved. Whether it's suggesting a new family activity or introducing a change at work, frame your proposal in terms of how it can benefit each stakeholder. This approach not only garners support, but also fosters a spirit of collaboration. Achieving cooperation isn't about imposing decisions, but about aligning individual interests with collective goals. By showcasing mutual benefits, we can pave the way for collaborative efforts and shared successes. Principle number 16 is show mutual benefits. Foster cooperation by aligning individual interests with the broader objective. Chapter eight, a formula that will work wonders for you. Navigating the delicate balance between expressing appreciation and addressing mistakes is a challenge many face. This chapter offers insights into this art, emphasizing the value of positive reinforcement combined with gentle, indirect feedback. Consider the story of Mia, a team leader at a design firm. One of her team members, Leo, submits a project that, while creative, misses some of the client's specifications. Instead of directly pointing out the errors, Mia starts by praising Leo's innovative approach and the unique elements he introduced. She then poses a question, how do you think the design would look if we incorporated some of the client's original color preferences? This indirect feedback prompts Leo to review the specifications and make the necessary adjustments. By starting with appreciation and using a subtle prompt, Mia ensures that Leo feels valued while still addressing the oversight. When you need to provide feedback or address a mistake, start by acknowledging the positive aspects or efforts of the individual. Then, instead of direct criticism, use questions or suggestions to guide them towards the desired outcome. This approach not only maintains their confidence, but also fosters a constructive environment for improvement. Effective feedback is as much about preserving self-esteem as it is about addressing mistakes. By combining appreciation with indirect guidance, we can create a positive atmosphere that encourages growth and collaboration. Principle number 17 is, express appreciation and address mistakes indirectly. Foster a constructive feedback environment by valuing efforts and guiding improvements subtly. Chapter nine, what everybody wants. At the core of human nature lies a universal yearning, the desire to feel significant and appreciated. This chapter delves deep into this intrinsic need, emphasizing its role in shaping behaviors, motivations, and interactions. Imagine Lara, a coach of a local youth soccer team. Among her players is Ethan, a boy with undeniable talent, but who often seems overshadowed by more outspoken teammates. During a crucial match when the team is trailing, Lara decides to make a strategic change. She calls Ethan over and says, I've seen your dedication during practice and I believe you have what it takes to turn this game around. Entrusting him with a pivotal role, she sends him back onto the field. Ethan, buoyed by the unexpected recognition and trust, plays with renewed vigor and determination, ultimately scoring the equalizing goal. After the match, many teammates approach Ethan expressing their admiration for his skill and contribution. Lara's act of recognizing Ethan's value not only boosts his confidence, but also elevates the team's spirit and unity. Through a simple gesture, she reinforces the profound impact of making someone feel important and valued. Whether it's acknowledging a family member's efforts around the house, praising a colleague for their contribution to a project, or simply expressing gratitude to a helpful stranger, small gestures of recognition can have profound impacts. By making others feel important and valued, we nurture positive relationships and foster mutual respect. Recognizing and valuing the contributions and worth of individuals is more than just a kind gesture. It's a fundamental way to meet one of the deepest human needs, paving the way for positive interactions and mutual appreciation. Principle number 18 is, recognize and value individual worth. Understand and cater to the universal human desire to feel important and appreciated. Chapter 10, an appeal that everybody likes. Enthusiasm is contagious. 
When channeled effectively, it can motivate, inspire, and drive people towards shared goals and visions. This chapter delves into the magnetic power of genuine enthusiasm and its role in influencing and rallying others. Consider the story of Ray, a manager at a software company. Tasked with launching a new product, he faces a team that's weary from past projects and skeptical about the new launch's success. Instead of diving straight into logistics and timelines, Ray decides to take a different approach. He organizes a kickoff meeting, showcasing the potential impact of their product on users worldwide. He shares inspiring stories, plays uplifting music, and even brings in a user to share their anticipation for the product. His genuine enthusiasm becomes infectious. The once doubtful team is now energized, sharing ideas, and eagerly discussing strategies. Ray's ability to arouse enthusiasm transforms the project's trajectory, turning apprehension into excitement and commitment. Whenever you're introducing a new idea or seeking support, remember the power of enthusiasm. Share your genuine excitement, highlight the positive impacts, and let your passion shine through. Whether it's rallying family members for a weekend trip or motivating colleagues for a new initiative, enthusiasm can be the spark that ignites collective action. Genuine enthusiasm is more than just a display of excitement. It's a powerful tool that can inspire, motivate, and rally others towards shared visions and goals. Principle number 19 is arouse enthusiasm. Harness the magnetic power of genuine excitement to influence and inspire those around you. Chapter 11, the movies do it, TV does it, why don't you do it? In an age of multimedia and constant stimulation, the art of capturing attention has evolved. This chapter emphasizes the power of dramatizing ideas, showcasing how adding a touch of drama can make messages more engaging, impactful, and memorable. Meet Clara, an environmental activist aiming to raise awareness about plastic pollution in her community. Instead of relying solely on statistics and lectures, she decides to dramatize her message. Clara organizes a public event at a local park where she unveils a massive sculpture made entirely of discarded plastic bottles representing a marine animal. The visual impact is immediate and profound. As onlookers gather, Clara shares the story of marine life affected by plastic waste, making her message tangible and relatable. The event garners media attention, and soon, local businesses start pledging to reduce single-use plastics. Clara's dramatic approach not only raises awareness, but also spurs community action. When trying to convey an idea or message, think about how you can add a touch of drama or visualization. Whether it's using props during a presentation, telling a compelling story, or creating a visual representation, dramatizing your ideas can make them resonate more deeply with your audience. In a world saturated with information, standing out requires more than just facts. By dramatizing our ideas, we can capture attention, evoke emotions, and leave a lasting impression. Principle number 20 is, dramatize your ideas. Enhance the appeal and memorability of your messages by adding a touch of drama and visualization. Chapter 12, when nothing else works, try this. Competition has long been a driving force in human endeavors. However, its power isn't just in outdoing others, but in pushing ourselves to reach new heights. This chapter delves into the art of using competition as a positive motivator challenging individuals to tap into their potential and achieve excellence. Consider the story of Adrian, a physical education teacher at a middle school. He notices that while some students are naturally athletic, others lack motivation and often sit on the sidelines. Instead of traditional sports, Adrian introduces a month-long fitness challenge. He sets up a leaderboard in the gym where students can track their progress in various activities, from running to jump rope. The twist? The competition isn't about outdoing peers, but about personal bests. Every student competes against their own previous records. As the weeks progress, even the most reluctant students get involved, eager to beat their own scores. The gym is abuzz with energy, camaraderie, and a shared spirit of self-improvement. Adrian's innovative approach transforms the physical education class from a dreaded period to a highlight of the day. When aiming to motivate yourself or others, Consider introducing a friendly competition, whether it's a step challenge with coworkers, a reading contest with friends, or a personal goal-setting exercise. The spirit of competition can drive motivation, dedication, 
and personal growth. Competition, when framed positively, can be a powerful catalyst for growth and excellence. It's not about besting others, but about challenging ourselves to be the best versions of who we can be. Principle number 21 is stimulate positive competition. Harness the drive to excel by challenging individuals to surpass their own benchmarks and achieve personal excellence. Part four, be a leader. How to change people without giving offense or arousing resentment. Chapter one, talk about your own mistakes. First, feedback, especially when it pertains to mistakes, can be a sensitive topic. This chapter offers a nuanced approach to this challenge, emphasizing the value of humility and self-awareness in making critiques more receptive. Imagine Sarah, a senior architect at a design firm. She's reviewing a project draft by a junior architect, Jake, and notices a few oversights. Instead of diving straight into corrections, Sarah recalls a similar project she worked on early in her career. She begins the feedback session by sharing her own past mistakes, explaining how she had made a similar oversight and the lessons she learned from it. By doing so, she creates an atmosphere of understanding and mentorship. When she then points out Jake's errors, he doesn't feel singled out or defensive. Instead, he's eager to learn and improve, seeing the feedback as a valuable learning opportunity rather than criticism. When you find yourself in a position to provide feedback or point out an error, start by sharing a personal anecdote or mistake related to the topic at hand. This approach not only humanizes you, but also creates a more open and constructive environment for discussion. Admitting our own imperfections isn't a sign of weakness. It's a testament to our humility and a bridge to more effective communication. By leading with our own mistakes, we pave the way for more open, constructive, and empathetic interactions. Principle number 22 is, lead with your own mistakes. Foster a receptive environment for feedback by acknowledging your own imperfections before addressing those of others. Chapter two, no one likes to take orders. The dynamics of leadership and influence are complex, and the manner in which directives are communicated can greatly impact their reception. This chapter delves into this subtlety, emphasizing the power of inquiry over direct commands, fostering a sense of collaboration and ownership. Consider the story of Alex, a manager at a tech startup. He's working with a team on a tight deadline for a new software release. Instead of dictating tasks, Alex takes a different approach. In a team meeting, he outlines the project's objectives and then asks, how do you think we can best achieve this? And what role do you see yourself playing in this process? The team members feeling empowered begin to brainstorm and voluntarily take on tasks that align with their strengths. The project not only meets its deadline, but also boasts of high quality work, all because Alex chose to ask questions rather than give direct orders. Whether you're coordinating a group project, organizing a family event, or collaborating with colleagues, try framing your directives as questions. This approach not only engages others, but also allows them to take ownership, often leading to more enthusiastic participation and better outcomes. Leadership isn't about dictating every move, it's about guiding and empowering. By choosing inquiry over commands, we foster collaboration, ownership, and often achieve superior results. Principle number 23 is, ask rather than order, engage and empower others by framing directives as questions, fostering a sense of collaboration and initiative. Chapter three, let the other person save face. In the intricate dance of human interactions, preserving one's dignity often holds paramount importance. This chapter underscores this sentiment, emphasizing the value of allowing individuals to maintain their self-respect, even in situations where they might be in the wrong. Think of Rosa, a seasoned chef who runs a popular restaurant. During a busy evening, she notices a junior chef, Marco, making a mistake in a dish's preparation. Instead of calling him out in front of the entire kitchen staff, Rosa discreetly pulls Marco aside. She gently points out the error, offering guidance on the correct technique, all while ensuring he doesn't feel humiliated. Marco, grateful for Rosa's tactful approach, corrects his mistake and continues to work with renewed focus and confidence. Rosa's decision to let Marco save face not only preserves his dignity, but also fosters a positive and supportive work environment. When faced with situations where someone makes an error or oversight, Consider how you can address the issue without publicly embarrassing them. Whether it's a coworker's mistake, 
a friend's oversight, or a family member's misjudgment, allowing them to save face can lead to more constructive outcomes and preserve the integrity of the relationship. Respect and empathy are cornerstones of positive interactions. By allowing others to save face, we not only preserve their dignity, but also nurture trust and mutual respect. Principle number 24 is preserve dignity. In all interactions, prioritize the preservation of an individual's self-respect and dignity, even when addressing mistakes. Even Chapter four, how to spur men onto success. Recognition and encouragement play pivotal roles in driving motivation and fostering growth. This chapter delves into the transformative power of positive reinforcement, emphasizing how consistent praise, even for small achievements, can propel individuals towards greater success. Consider the story of Liam, a basketball coach for a high school team. Among his players is Nathan, a talented individual but lacking in confidence. Instead of focusing solely on Nathan's shortcomings, Liam adopts a different strategy. Every time Nathan makes even a slight improvement, be it a better pass, a strategic move, or a successful shot, Liam acknowledges and praises it. Over the season, these consistent affirmations build Nathan's confidence. He begins to push himself harder, refining his skills, and emerging as one of the team's key players. By the end of the season, not only has Nathan's performance drastically improved, but he also becomes a source of inspiration for his teammates. Liam's approach of recognizing and celebrating every improvement transforms Nathan's trajectory, showcasing the profound impact of positive reinforcement. Whenever you're in a position to mentor, guide, or even interact with others, remember the power of praise. Recognizing and celebrating even the smallest achievements can boost confidence, motivation, and drive individuals to exceed their own expectations. The journey to success is paved with consistent effort and growth. By acknowledging and praising every step forward, no matter how small, we can inspire individuals to reach their fullest potential. Principle number 25 is, celebrate every improvement. Harness the power of positive reinforcement to motivate and drive individuals towards greater success. Chapter five, give a dog a good name. Expectations play a powerful role in shaping behaviors and outcomes. This chapter delves into the psychology of positive labeling, illustrating how setting optimistic expectations can inspire individuals to rise to the occasion and embody those very attributes. Think of Maya, a school counselor. She encounters a student named Jake, who, despite his potential, is often labeled as troublesome due to a few disciplinary incidents. Instead of approaching Jake with preconceived notions, Maya decides to give him a fresh slate. She assigns him a role in organizing a school event, referring to him as a responsible leader in front of his peers and teachers. This new positive label surprises Jake, but it also sparks a change. With the newfound responsibility and the trust placed in him, Jake starts to take his role seriously, displaying leadership qualities that many hadn't seen before. By the end of the year, not only is the event a success, but Jake's overall behavior and self-perception shift dramatically. Maya's decision to give a dog a good name transforms Jake's trajectory, showcasing the profound impact of positive expectations. When interacting with others, especially those who might be struggling with self-worth or negative perceptions, consider the power of positive labeling. By setting optimistic expectations and bestowing positive labels, you can inspire change and empower individuals to see the best in themselves. Our beliefs and expectations about others can shape their behaviors and self-perception by bestowing positive labels and setting optimistic expectations, we can inspire individuals to rise to the occasion and embody their best selves. Principle number 26 is, set positive expectations, influence behavior and inspire growth by bestowing optimistic labels and expectations. Chapter six, make the fault seem easy to correct. The approach to addressing mistakes can greatly influence the outcome this chapter offers a perspective on feedback, emphasizing the importance of framing corrections in a manner that feels approachable and achievable, thus motivating individuals to take corrective action. Consider the story of Elena, a dance instructor. One of her students, Sophie, struggles with a particular dance move, leading to frustration and dwindling confidence. Instead of highlighting the complexity of the move, Elena adopts a different tactic. She breaks down the move into simpler steps and says, it's just a matter of shifting your weight a bit more to the left like this. 
You're almost there. By making the correction seem minor and within reach, Elena instills a renewed sense of hope in Sophie. With this new perspective and Elena's guidance, Sophie practices with renewed vigor and soon masters the move. Elena's approach not only addresses the mistake, but also ensures that the solution feels achievable, fostering a positive learning environment. When providing feedback or pointing out errors, consider how you can frame the correction in a way that feels manageable. By emphasizing the achievability of the solution, you can motivate and empower individuals to take action and improve. The way we present solutions and corrections can be as impactful as the feedback itself. By making faults seem easy to correct, we foster a can-do attitude, encouraging growth and improvement. Principle number 27 is, frame corrections positively. Present solutions in a manner that feels achievable, motivating individuals to take corrective action. Chapter seven, making people glad to do what you want. In the realm of influence and persuasion, understanding the desires and values of others is paramount. This chapter delves into this principle, emphasizing the significance of aligning requests with the motivations and interests of the individual, making them more inclined to willingly cooperate. Picture Lucas, a project manager at a software company. He's tasked with implementing a new software tool that requires the collaboration of various departments. Instead of merely assigning tasks, Lucas takes the time to understand the goals and challenges of each department. When approaching the sales team, he highlights how the tool can streamline their processes and help them achieve their targets faster. For the design team, he emphasizes the tool's capability to enhance creativity and collaboration. By tailoring his pitch to resonate with the unique motivations of each team, Lucas not only secures their buy-in but also ensures enthusiastic participation in the project. When seeking cooperation or trying to persuade someone, take a moment to understand their perspective, desires, and values. Tailor your approach to align with their motivations, making your request more compelling and relevant to them. True persuasion isn't about manipulation, it's about alignment. By understanding and resonating with the motivations of others, we can foster genuine cooperation and make individuals glad to participate. Principle number 28 is, align with desires and values. Understand and resonate with the motivations of others to foster genuine cooperation and enthusiasm. After navigating the deep insights from every chapter of Dale Carnegie's masterpiece, we've uncovered a wealth of knowledge spread across its four distinct parts. This journey has not just been about understanding the content, but truly grasping the transformational power these teachings hold for our personal and professional lives. Remember, the real magic unfolds when we genuinely integrate these principles into our daily interactions and experiences. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video and found it helpful, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss an update. And if you liked what you saw, a like would mean the world to me. It helps support the channel and lets me know you want to see more content like this. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.